Every day, I know how we are playing the children. No, he said, Two minutes, they are why the children are playing. Because the man who had to play him, they found him cell phone. So, me there, stepping razor tomorrow. Brian, tomorrow too. Well, you know they are today neither. No. <laughs> That's why you go like it there now. Who are you up a new addition to this thing, you know? Tony, Tony, Tony. Me I tell you. Nice lady to you know, but you see, she just come here, I tell you know. Them are always nice when them just come. She's a very nice lady. And she have locks too. Don't know if she's a rasta, but she have locks. But, well, most people have locks and rasta still, so... But nice lady, I really she she's the one who is making you see all these things on the the internet. What them call it here? What is your what is your 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 what is this? Wait, let me cut the card the paper for me years. Cut the card the paper for me years. You use what? Oh, you work as a social media and manager. You're the social media manager. So how much ones in that? Uh, how much ones in your? Group. Are you alone? Money got social manager too. Social oh she work under you. She don't work. She can't work with you. No, wait there, wait there. She she's part of your team too. Social she watch out, make I tell you something. You is the first person I see coming here with a camera and I take picture with the, the people them where I work on the ear. I never see money coming here with a camera and take picture for me. <laughs> money, you ever come in here with a camera and take picture for the ear? When? Me? Are you take me too and put me for the ear like she? You come in here and take me to put me for the ear? I have never, never, and I'm not telling no lie, I never see you coming here with a camera yet. So I want to give thanks for the new addition, Tony. You look like you're a very nice person. Yeah, and I hope you stay nice. Yeah, yeah, look like a very nice person. Where, where you come from? Oh, all right. So you come from me, Pen Clarendon. Money come from Portland. That is nice. That is nice, man. No, that is nice. I don't know. Country ladies are always nice, you know. You know, but uh, yeah, man, continue. I like what you really you there till I know I take picture. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. <laughs> hey, no, you take that. Yeah. No, man, I like that. Anyway, I caught in the today, caught in the today pan. Many times I ask myself, what would happen if Malimu were to rise up and see what is happening? Many times I ask myself, what would happen if Kwame Nkrumah and Patrice Emery Lumumba were to rise up and see what is happening? Because what they would be confronted with is an Africa where the Democratic Republic of Congo is unsettled. There is a war going on there, but it is not on the front pages of our newspapers. Because we don't even control our newspapers and the media. As I speak to you, the Central African Republic is at war. But we talk of it only mutedly. As I speak to you now, in South Sudan, the youngest nation in Africa, the Nuer of reason against the Dinka. As I speak to you now, Eritrea is unsettled. As I speak to you now, there is an ease in Egypt as there is an ease in Libya. In Niger it is no better. In Senegal, in the Casamans it is no better. In Somalia it is no better. Africa is at war with herself. This is what they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an Africa which statistician and romantic economists say is growing, but which in truth is stagnated. That is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an African which, as Professor Mlama intimated in our presentation here, is an African which is suffering from schizophrenia. He does not know herself. They would be confronted with an African whose young men and women 
have no interest and no love for their continent. They would be confronted with an Africa where young men and young women are constantly humiliated at the embassies of European countries and at the United States of America as they seek the almighty green card. They would be confronted with an Africa where young men and women from Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Mali, and Mauritania drown in the Mediterranean as they seek to be enslaved in Europe. This time round, Africans are not wailing and kicking as they are being taken away to be enslaved. They are being seen wailing and kicking as they seek to be enslaved in Europe and America. This is the tragedy of Africa. They'll be confronted with an African where people have lost their self-pride. An Africa where Africans are not proud of their things. An Africa where in the hotels of Dar es Salaam or Nairobi, even food has foreign names. When we fry potatoes, we call them French fries, even when they are fried in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> that is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with another Africa. An Africa which does not tell her story. An Africa whose story is told by Europe and America. The CNN, Radio Deutsche Welle, Radio France. That is the Africa they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with the young men and women who have no pride in Africa. When they want to enjoy themselves. They sing the praises of football teams from Europe and America. It is Manchester United. It is Arsenal. It is Real Madrid. And Barcelona, not Younger, not Mufulira Wanderers, not Gormahia, not FC Leopards. No. That is the Africa that they would be confronted with. They would be confronted with an Africa which does not enjoy the theater and drama. That Africa celebrates Leonardo DiCaprio. It celebrates Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. The Africa does not celebrate Genevieve Naji of Nigeria or Rita Dominic or, or Lou Jacobs of Nigeria. It does not celebrate Bongo Wood or Nollywood or Riverwood. It celebrates Hollywood. That is the Africa with which they would be confronted. They would be confronted with African women whose greatest source of joy is cheap grade B Mexican soap opera, La Patrona, La Mujer de Mi Vida. The rich also cry. <laughs> Why must we remind ourselves of these realities? Because throughout the ages, the battle has always been the battle of the mind. And if your mind is conquered, then you are going nowhere. And that is why in the ages of enlightenment in Europe, the great René Descartes said, Cogito ego sum, I think, therefore I am. And therefore, if Africans are to begin to make a contribution in their affairs, Africans must begin to think. But the question is, are we thinking? We have universities in their numbers. Tanzania has universities including Dar es Salaam. Nairobi has universities as indeed Kampala, as indeed South Africa, Johannesburg. We have all these universities. We have engineers. But our roads are not being made by Tanzanian civil engineers. It is the Chinese who are present in this assembly who are making our role. So we have engineers who cannot even make roads. We have doctors whom we have trained. But when we are sick, particularly if we are of the political class, Depending on who colonized you, 
If you are colonized by the United Kingdom, you rush to London. If you are colonized by the French, you rush to Paris. If you are colonized by the Portuguese, you rush to Lisbon. And if you are colonized by the Spaniards, you rush to Madrid, Spain. And recently, because the Asians are beginning to get their act together, we run to India. And very lately, because the Arabs are also beginning to get their act together, we run to Dubai. Notwithstanding that we have the Kenyatta hostels of this country, the Muhimbilis of Tanzania, the Chris Hani Baragwanaths of South Africa, we and the Mama Yemos of Kinshasa in Zaire or the Democratic Republic of Congo, but we have no faith in our doctors. In the area of education, we also don't have faith. Our political class introduced something that they call free education, but it's free indeed, free of knowledge. <laughs> because they are so suspicious of those institutions that the typical African politician would not dare take their children to those schools. Their children will be educated in, in the British system, in the American system, so that when they graduate, they go to the United Kingdom, to the United States. Not that there is anything wrong with those institutions, but the agenda is wrong because our leaders long lost the script and ought to be described for who they are, our misleaders. But we are co-authors of our own misfortune. Whenever we are given an opportunity to elect our leaders, we are given a blank check. And if you permit me a little latitude, and if you give me a blank check, and you allow me to analogize, and you say that I'm given the blank check to buy a Mercedes-Benz, what we do is that when we are called upon having been so empowered, we buy what one calls a tuk-tuk from India and expect it to behave like a Mercedes-Benz. How does that happen? Because what we do is to elect thieves. We elect hyenas to take care of goats. And when the goats are consumed, we wonder why. Continent with Mutabaruka. Things are getting hot. But don't let my white friends stop you from hearing the truth. Some of my white friends are upset and for good reason. It's not every day you people get to see the inside secrets we whites have used for decades to dominate people of color. But don't fear. My white friends are just mad because once you know all the secrets to gaining real black power, they will no longer be able to rule over you because basically you blacks are the cash cow for white economics and it has always been this way. Now, let's get back down to business. Today, I'm going to give you three more tips to gaining real black power. And this time I will try to keep it short. Last time we spoke about unity, religion and economics. And while these are very important to establishing black power there are other factors, more subtle, which you will need if you were to ever rule the world again. The first is self-image and self-love. The reason why you spend so much time trying to be friends with us white people is because you really don't want to be friends with yourselves. Your issue with self-image is a psychological one, which we implanted when we gave you our religion. This weapon was very effective, because it got you black people to fall in love with our image of beauty while at the same time making you hate your own. You see, every time a little black girl watches television, she is systematically being programmed to hate herself. And this is really a crime, because that little black girl will grow up and teach her little daughter to hate herself too. These methods of mind control are called implants. They are very effective and boy let me tell you. If I had a dime for every black female who permed her hair, I'd be a millionaire. You black men really have to get it together. For you to perm your hair is saying to the world that nappy, kinky hair is not good enough to wear. To believe this is culturally suicidal and reinforces our white supremacy system on every level. To perm your hair as a black woman is like a shark cutting off its fin. To do this is an open declaration that you hate who you are. And everybody knows this but you. We whites look at you and quietly laugh. We can't believe how you try to suppress your own DNA and then teach it to your daughters like it is some kind of family recipe to make popsicles. This act is nothing to be proud of. 
You should stop it and stop it now. I've seen little black girls as young as five years old with perms in their hair. This is completely niggardly and self-hating. Some of you black girls take it a step further and wear other people's hair in your heads. How can any self-respecting people do this and keep a straight face? I mean really. This is ridiculous. I'm sure the Koreans are laughing all the way to the bank selling you blacks other people's hair. And I'd be willing to bet that the Hindus who distribute it are getting a nice payday too. You see under our white supremacy culture we take your sicknesses and turn them into profit for us. We know you cannot stand your black skin either and will buy all kinds of creams and lighteners to look more like us. We've made billions of dollars on your dysfunction. This is the way we keep the money rolling in. The sad thing is you hate yourself so much, you were willing to burn your scalp and face to change it. Some I have seen cut their noses down to be more white. Michael Jackson was one of those girls who did this. I mean guys. I mean. Whatever. You get what I am saying. It's all about not being who you really are. But worst, is the fact that you can't really say you love others until you can truly love yourselves. Which is why some of your relationships with black men are so bad. He's the deep part. Some of you would diss a black guy because maybe he didn't go to church or have a good job. He would say if he does not believe in Jesus you cannot date him. Remember. Many of the images of Jesus have blonde hair and European features. So you diss the black guy for a blonde hair white guy who's basically a ghost, and then turn around and diss yourself by bleaching and perming your hair to look like the blonde haired white image we gave you during slavery. Long story short, you were so in love with our image you reject everything that's not us. And that's how we control you. If I saw my white girlfriend trying to put other people's hair in her head and trying to look black, I would not respect her as much as I probably should. Further, I would get her a psychological evaluation because, like a fish shaving off its scales and wearing cat fur to be more like its enemy, a black woman perming her own hair to wear other people's long stringy hair is borderline psychotic. And means the mental evaluation needs to be put in place. You black women are the mothers of all civilization. For Christ's sakes, going around trying to reject your own birthright. If you ever want to get back on top, you are going to have to stop perming and bleaching yourselves. Teach your daughters and sons to love who they are. And stop watching sex in the city. It's just a bunch of white women bed hopping and living a lifestyle you will never see. Spend your time teaching your little girls to love being black. Turn those skinny white bitches off and give your babies a future where black girls rule. This is a good start. R.E.F.M. Thought provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Sit my. R.E.F.M. really rocking, you know? Yeah, 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 this is not a you I say. say. I will FM is root right. Another thing, it may be a bit touchy, but I just have to say it. Um, black men who, you know, get into Rastafari, get into the music, and talk about blackness, and talk about Africa, talk about Mama Africa, and then turn around and take on white wives. Um, I, 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 I am like, this is what is this this particular thing is very puzzling to me because we have a situation where we are at the lowest at the lowest class of every society in every part of the world and when our men who gain success and great and um you know financial stability turn around and take a white woman for their wife and and not take on a black wife you are in in you are contributing to the up upliftment of white society and white ideas and white children. You know, you're turning your back away from blackness and black women and black children. We need to take our people out of the ghettos and we need to get our people um, back to a certain standard where we can lift each other and take each other out of the situation that we find ourselves in. Ari of M. Thought-provoking, always smoking, 
Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. We there, we there, man. We just have feed you with certain things. You know them we there. Sometimes we talk too much. <laughs> anyway, you know what I say for now. The thing about the the camera and the prison thing and the me, me, you know so I'm glad the camera and come here. Because it come like it make me work easier now. Because the, the reality of where I and I are talking about continuously, it's like it just leaks somebody and it just come home to somebody. That's all on TV now. You see certain people that talk about it in a very serious way. All in a parliament. So out of evil come forth good sometime. And where we are see where I go on now, the discussion and... All the things them that surround the whole idea of reparation and the whole idea of sending prisoners to come down here to come spend them time in a hotel and all these way. May I tell you, it, 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 it really, it really strike a pose. Yes. Because sometimes it takes certain people to say certain things. That when them say it, it have legitimacy. When Muta Baruka said something, he said, sure, I saw Muta stay, man. Damn barefoot boy. I saw him stay, him talk them things all the while. When certain people of their elk say the same thing, it kind of gives strength to where we did that say continuously. That's why we now stop saying what we are saying, you know. No, man. We now stop saying, hey, you know what the brethren, Danny Glover say, when asked what must we do, for this process, him say just keep talking about it, man. Keep talking about it because sometimes people are say, "Boy, talk, talk, talk." I mean, action. But talk is action, you know. Because if you're not talking about the thing, people won't be getting any education about the thing, or they won't be understanding the situation. So, talking is not necessarily just talk. Some people love to. To eat against talking and say, yeah, you talk, talk, what will the action? Talking is action. Because when a man hear what you're saying, you know, is that motivate him. And most people, most people will tell you that you have the psychologist, the psychologist and the psychiatrist, you know, it's pure talking, him talk to you, you know. Yeah, man, him put you dog in a one chair over the side, him sit down over the side, him ask you a question, suggest certain things to you, give you certain framework to work with in your thinking is talking him talking same thing with the psychiatrist when a doctor when you go to the doctor he says so tell me where you feel the pain alright explain to me when you eat that your belly run and all the talking because it's talking going to lead to action and most of us who have the microphone in front of us who make music who talk on radio must when we talk become a residue of action in people's mind. That when people hear you, it 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 it, it vibrates and sometimes it's sticking at them subconsciousness until such time it rises to the top. So when I lick against talking, when I'm gonna say why why so you talk so what you gonna do about it? You have to do something about it when you talk. Because if you shut your mouth, if you see something go wrong and you shut your mouth, you know, it's like a man that says, well, in farm I feel dead. A man rape a girl in the community. And because you don't talk, the girl, they continually get raped. And then you end up either get mad or dead. Because you, you see the thing and you never talk. You never in farm. So, most of the war that has been fought on earth, the men them who start the war never go to war. They start them talk the people them in going to war. So don't underestimate the power of speech, the power of the word. Because the word of a sound and the sound is the power. So I believe in keep on talking. Because that is the way you're going to vent your frustration and disgust. And when these guys hear you talking and hear more than one person attack and hear 
many, many, many of us talk and talk in a very serious, serious, serious way about certain things. You have to talk. Don't shut him out. So no one can go brag in my mouth. If you say, boy, well, right now, Muta, why well, you talk certain things, you know, or know that you talk, what you going to do? You know, you know, form a political party. Make those who get the knowledge and the understanding form that political party because not everybody can do what I am doing and I can't do what other people doing. So meanwhile, I can stand here and motivate people. Maybe I motivate somebody you now for go start a political party. I not start a political party. I don't know nothing about politics more than we are go wrong and we should have go right. I know I end up like Spider Man. You know, see, cause Spider Man, who didn't know the Spider Man ever lose? <laughs> I tell you, that is the loser of all losing. <laughs> I tell him, say, you should call me name in another an article, you know. I've been since we call me name that I lose. Spider Man lose. Because the trick never work. Uh, trick the people, them trick him. So, sorry, Spider-Man, you have to come again. Yes, that's where it go. Spider-Man. Oh, you be Spider-Man. No, the brother will tell what him trick the people, them. <laughs> so, I trick, I trick them, you know. <laughs> Spider-Man get up beaten. <laughs> Spider-Man, the people, them trick him. <laughs> and vote for the next man. That terrible thing that. Terror, I, I, you know, to the people in Africa look like they didn't know same of a lose, you know. That's why they tell me the story about the brother that's the story, you know. Yeah. They tell me the brother that's the story, I mean, I say, yeah. But them never put him as brother Nancy, them put brother Tukuma as the person. Brother Tukuma is the person. But the reality, the reality of it is that we must continue to speak. Speak truth to the people. That is what it is. You must speak truth to the people. And if you see wrong and don't say nothing about it, you are one of the guilty ones. If you say oppression and you don't make people know say it's oppression and make no know say, make them do make them know say they are oppressing the people them. You are guilty. That is why I find it very strange that a man could have a mic in front of him for four hours. And him not say nothing of consequence to the people them. A man have a time to spend four minutes on a CD, four minutes on a tune, or three minutes on a tune. And when him done with the tune, him have the people them in a some weird, weird scenario with themselves. Till them end up a carry all gasoline up on their shoulder and go dance. It's a terrible thing. You have three minutes for a vinyl. You have three minutes for a CD. You have three minutes for a jump drive. And all you can tell the people them say wave your panty in the ear and all them something there. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Why you up all the prisoner them in a GP? And why you up all the prisoner them in a Spanish town district prison? You understand? Why heal them up? Because we are told that the majority of prisoners in there likely to come out this year or next year. There's a youth in there where I want to interview him as him come out. Believe you me. Yeah, and him knows who me attacked. And the prisoner them in a Spanish town know who me attacked. Oh, me want to interview him. So, brethren, anytime you left prison, find me. Me easy to find. Trust me. Me don't have... Where, where them call a place again? I refer me. So if you want to contact me on RFM, contact me on RFM. I want you, I want you talk to me, Bridget, because your story, I want a unique story. Serious, serious story. Cutting edge. edge. So you know, say we are talking about the power of speech. I know speech affects people. You know, so when you are youth and you are somebody has something, you know, the worst thing you can tell them is about their mother, you know. And then you have to say, sticks and stones can break my bones, but word cannot harm me. And the word harm me is they got do your mother something, you know, them kind of with a lollipop your mother or something like that. And then you know, say, a big fight that, you know. Word, sound, sound is the power. Most of the wars that have been fought in the world was not started by soldiers, but by men with them words. Use the pen. Can't say the pen is mightier than the sword. 
Because the pen, these words come out of the man work mouth, write with pen, and then pass it on and start wars, and millions of people die because of that. It's word sound send white people into Africa to capture black people and bring them on here. So, and when the white people them realize that, them use word to pacify the people them and give them a book named the Holy Bible by King James. At least it's King James version them give away. And those words have become the heartbeat of most black people. Because them say, is God words. And them say, in the beginning was the word. And the word take unto itself flesh and dwell amongst man. First John. At least John, sorry. <laughs> yes. Them say, in the beginning was the word. And the word take unto itself flesh. And the word, hey, and you know what say? And God said, let there be light. And the word bring that into power according to them. So, look how them put the word. That you can say no, God just say the word. And it happened. So, don't underestimate the power of the word. And how you frame and fashion the word. Because sometimes a man tell you something. And really and truly, that word in itself. Them say it's a bad word. And you can use, hey, you have man will win lottery and them say, oh, so, well, well, what's your one of them word there? Eh? And then you have another man where him book a man, him book him too and him cut the same word when him use in the lottery. It's the same word him use when him book him too. And the same word is when him have a box on him wife. Him say, you little, what's it, what's it, and box on him wife. It's the same word. But it's just how you use that word there. Eh? So we understand that Everyone of you who depend on this microphone yeah, and who have the power of the word have a responsibility. A responsibility to project things out there that is beneficial to the other human beings. We're not seeing them, but we know them out there. Thousands of them out there. Especially like when you have four hours on the radio. Four hours and enough ear time that you know. No fear time, lads. And if you can't use a four hour day for advance and uplift, uplift the people, them. I better you go just turn up to the toilet. I mean, remember, say turn up to the toilet, I mean, pan the ground in the toilet, I mean, in the toilet bowl. And flush yourself. Yeah, man. We have to respect the power of the word. Very important because when you speak, the word that you speak don't stop travel. You might not hear it again, but it don't stop travel. Because if it did stop travel, you would have never hear that same word again. Because that word they can't put self flesh. But the next man can repeat that same word. And continue and continue. Infinity. It just keep going. Like a circle, 360 degrees, it moves. So people must stop talking about it's just talk, 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 talk. Talking is good. Talking is very good. Woe unto those who it out against talking and when them get dumb, them vex. It's very good. And when I say talking, I mean talk that is responsible and you take heed of what you're saying to the people because the people listen keenly to what he said. That's why politicians get tricky you now. Because sometimes, sometimes, them feet of the people are hear about them now listen to them talk certain things and them the reality that the people are listen. Like no. Look how that thing I get so wild like wildfire. This camera and visit ya. Not even the Obama visit this story so much emotions in the black in the people them. But the farmer, slave plantation owner, come here and say something. Just say him say it, you know. And he take unto itself flesh. And so much people. We are talking about people from Jamaica, people from America, people from England. 
everybody just take it on so and just push it back and I say no we can't tolerate that or we forgot to do that and this and this and that but these people will govern the country don't listen them why you listen to them you know but them not listen to you because you hear them do them go behind the people them back continuously and make certain deeds and come out back big and bad and them will taste the water them do it all the while especially the government them do it all the while them come out in something and I taste the water and see how the people them are going to react to the thing. And then when the people them start to react, them say, oh, okay, we're going to draw back now and do something else. Kind of give the little people them. It's like you feed the rat. Little piece of cheese, little piece of cheese. And every time the cheese, every time the rat bites out the cheese and the rat chop no come, you put a bigger piece of cheese on it. And now the people them, the people them are react because of what them hear. And the people them react because of what them don't hear. And you sit down there as a politician and you know what well, you must tell the people them, you know. But well, you are test the people them. Why the hell you keep testing the people them? Why you test the people them? You are there to serve the people, not test them. And most right now, what we see are going on is like politicians that test the people them for say, if them can't do them wrong and continue to do them wrong. If the people them don't ball out, them feel say that is a license for do wrong. That's why we must ball out. We must make a voice here on the top of the mountain and shout it out loud. So watch out. We are listening to what you say. We don't agree with what you say. And we don't say it one day or nine day. Because they don't have a say in Jamaica say black people in Jamaica them ball out for nine day and after them gone back to them normal way of life. We now make them stop here where we are say. And we now use another nine day one and neither. Because anytime it's the nine day gone, them realize it, oh, so them don't know. If they go over ten day, you know, say, them take the people them serious. Yeah, man, if we make it past ten day, them say, right, them serious, you know, nine day gone. And it's not dead yet. Like it's a nine night thing I go on, you know. It's like a nine night thing I go on in a Jamaica. The people them angry for nine day and that is it. After that, them go back to them normal thing. But we, we who have the microphone in front of we, must not relent. Must not give up hope. We must continue that journey. We must make them make us feel like, why they're going to win, you know? We can't bother with it. Because there's a temptation to feel that way. When you keep ramming things, and you know there's truth in our people, man. I say, speak truth to the people, and you speak to them. And when you look on them, you see them and react like, say, them are idiot. In your mind, you have to chop. Every time I just go on my yard, I stand up and I say certain things, you know, because them people look like them stiff neck. But you can't make that carry your go off key. Can't make that carry your go off key. You have to continue because you are confident in the victory of good over evil. And even if it don't happen in a your lifetime, you know, so you have set the stage for it happen in a somebody's lifetime. You have set the stage. And it's set we have set the stage. Because some things when me see happen now, especially with Rasta. When we just outside Rasta, it's like you have to fight for them things. They struggle hard. Seriously struggle. I mean, if you see how people are, use them normal ear that is for us look like blacks. I'm not about them are by long. I don't know how them are up on them head ass here. If you just look like blacks. There's a time if you ever go home, if you ever go to your gate, if you ever go to your gate and your ear look pull up, don't come in here with your ear look so. Comb your ear. And if you go to the road, that is not so again. The most of the time, you say, people, not police now, the most of the time, you say, people take back and cut off my bridging, bridging them locks. Because them, I say, see one of them there. Me, I walk through Spanish town already. I come from country. We come off of the train. And me, I walk, go down the road. And all of a sudden, me see the man at the door up on Young Street. See the rest of the man that come there, who come inside? Me, I say, blows and skirts. I sit down in a bus 
and see picnic put them on outside in a the in a the breeze. And because the woman who want the picnic put her on in a the breeze, she say, take in your before make the rat man chop it off. <laughs> me I say, blows and skirt. And me as a young rat, sit down behind this and I listen to this. The rat man is like the boogeyman in a Jamaica. And then you want to frighten your picnic, then you tell him about the boogeyman. You tell him about the rat man. The black heart man. Take your finger out of your mouth. I'm going to make the rat man cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. That's some terrible thing. Terrible thing. But we see certain things that evolve. And we feel good because we know, say, I stop, we never stop, you know. We never stop. We never relent. We never relent. My daughter, the first dreadlocks daughter go a Mount Alvernia. And when people say, them not going to allow them, them say, them not going to allow them, them, me not going to cut off her lock for school, no school. And if them ever don't, they can make a ball out loud. But you have a little liberal sister down there where loud that. I remember the first dreadlocks were go at St. Andrew High School. I not call her name, but I tell you, and you have to fight. You have to fight for that. You have to fight for it. Simple little thing where you have to fight for yourself. But why you have to fight for them things there? Them things there is just some normal, natural thing. But to the normal people, them in a Jamaica, it's not normal. But you have to keep repeating it. Speak truth. Speak truth. Speak, speak, speak. speak. Just keep saying it. That is why sometimes you hear we play the same thing on the program. For years, you hear we say the same thing. And I play about the same tape. Sometimes we play a tape. Over and over, and one night we play it, and the man I never did I hear it. And him say, Man, listen to the program the whole time, and him never hear it yet. And he said, But you play it already because people ask you to play it again because they want to hear it, and they want other people hear it. So, the message is that all the people them who are in a disposition like me. And all the people them who record music with them mouth, voice, must use it wisely. Use it with understanding. Because you're guilty if you make the people them falter. You're guilty. When you cause a politician and you do the same thing or even worse than what the politician are doing. Because most artists are called politicians, but when you look at where he might do, he might do the same thing what the politician are doing. So you have to use the power of speech very wisely. That we are telling the people them. This is the cutting edge. Hey man, you will if you fight against reparation, or them get black people, if you turn against black people because black people are talking about repairing the atrocity and the damage what was done to them ancestors, all them get black people if you fight for them cars over the cars of black people. It's a really weird situation. We never come here with no visa and no passport. And everywhere we are going now, even in the Commonwealth country, them, Mr. Cameron country, who we have a man on us who represent for him queen. Mr. Cameron country, who claims say Commonwealth nation is part of the British Empire. Yet still we have to have visa for going country. And you have black people who not recognize them ancestry. You have black people who are questioning the idea of reparation. You have black people who are questioning the idea of repatriation. How the hell them get to do that? How the hell them get to question that and stand up for them argument? The argument where white people use for oppress way. Black people are using the same argument against them own self. To maintain white people stand upon the subject. How them get to do that? 
Can somebody please tell me how them get people to do that? How them get black people for cause black people? How them get black people for say? But black people don't sell out black people too. So what you talk about? Can you imagine a Jew has turned up and I say, then Jew don't sell me in the Alacastro, which they did. Which they did. You didn't have Jews who was on the side of the Nazi them. Can you imagine a Jew had get up? Because Jews know that you have Jews who they do certain things. Have you ever heard a Jew talking against Jews about the Holocaust? Never. And in a, it, it sounds like you never have Jews who was on the side, the other side. How did they get us? Question. How did they get black people? To stand up against black people for white people in the devastation of black people's ancestors that we who are talking about repairing the damage them of black people are say move on from that and the white boy just come here come say that to them the white boy just come here come say look you know Make we move on, no? We know of the problem, and we know of the, the friendship. <laughs> we know of the friendship that the British and the, the, the Jamaicans had. But now it's time to move on. So let's move on. You think him can go England go tell Jews that? Who don't know to say, them have we in our grip. Boy, I write in a paper. People are talk on TV like say, we who are talking about it are fool fool. Me want to ask the same people them who are talk about we are talk about reparation. You ask him if Cameron, if you think Cameron did not get up in a parliament, in a the British parliament, and tell the Jews them say, look at Jews. Hitler killed six million when no, but that's a long time to make a move on. What are that be a precare? What are that be a precare? If Cameron get up and say that about the Jews. And we, we, who got through more than Jewish people, the greatest atrocity against any human group take place in a shuttle slavery. And we attack like say, because it happened before we born. We must move on and forget about that. What happened yesterday totally related to what is happening today, you know. So slavery is not an isolated thing. A lot of the conditions that black people find themselves in, including the leadership, including the leadership, is because of something that took place yesterday and the day before. So we can't separate yesterday from today. Because tomorrow, today will be yesterday. So we want to know and understand. How did they get black people to defend them more than all them defending themselves? And that me want to find out. Oh, oh, we hear about reparation. And black people are saying, oh, what do them people are? Black people for work for them, I get them make white people see with them up. Look here. How we build them up. Forced labor. The richest man in Europe making riches from Jamaica. We don't play that. How you know we go play that, that tape there, you know? We go and play back that tape there, you know? The richest man in Europe making riches. We're not talking about now, you know. We're talking about in that time. In slavery days. In slavery days, the richest man in Europe was in Jamaica with slaves making himself rich of Jamaica slaves, Africans. And we there so now, after a group of people who come realize what I am my ancestor, you know, and I, I did go through all of that. I you know separate myself from my ancestor. Because if it wasn't I, the ancestors last. And if it wasn't I, ancestors, I would be last. So there's no, there's no 
split between who was there 400 years ago and who's here now. It is, it's I see him one was there. It's I them put the chain pan. It's I them put in at the bottom and they, 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 they ship them. And it's I jump off overboard too. And it's I reach across that so and then put I between two ass and beat I till I, I and bust. And I watch I mother sit on and I watch I while I was in I mother belly. It's high. Same one. I not different from them. I not separate myself from them. So when I talk about reparation, I see myself as the same person who was whipped and lashed and taken from his mother's land and his mother's womb. It's I see one. I am my ancestor. So I couldn't go come here so no. Come here white people and tell me, you say, move on. And then become worse of all. Because white people supposed to say that, you know. White people supposed to say, move on. Because them guilty. But I know why you're black people. And some of them who claim that they're educated, come tell me, say, Oh, black people love freeing so one no one from white people you know say you know say i see black people are making suffer <laughs> it's always come that way then it's the same black people make not suffer or oh, black people have to do the sufferation today you know say it's a bad government of course it's bad government because these people who call themselves government is working for those people even though them don't realize them are working because you put them in a state of brainwashed state that they must do things to white people and don't even know says white people they might work for because that is the power of white supremacy white supremacy is not the color of your skin white supremacy is a system designed by europeans to control and maintain power over the world that is white supremacy by any means necessary by whosoever will fulfill that action of white supremacy. So white supremacy is maintained all says white people in my work for. Because that is the power of white supremacy. White supremacy is not the color of your skin. White supremacy is a system designed by Europeans to control and maintain power over the world. That is white supremacy. By any means necessary. By whosoever will fulfill that action of white supremacy. So white supremacy is maintained also by niggers. That's why people in my work for. Because that is the power of white supremacy. White supremacy is not the color of your skin. White supremacy is a system designed by Europeans to control and maintain power over the world. That is white supremacy. By any means necessary, by whosoever will fulfill that action of white supremacy. So white supremacy is maintained also by niggers who govern. Am I sure how brainwashed them is? A white man, I can't tell you that, you know. A white man, I can't tell you that. And when the white man tell you that. If it's Tough you say blood bath is a white man. I tell you that. But if I come tell you that, y'all say, eh, y'all say, you say like like tourism. Sometimes tourism are worries you know. You have a kind of black people that sell themselves in such a way, you know that you want to please white people continuously for the dollar, Yankee dollar. And when you go for them country, you think they have been over backward. You know what youth. In a man to go be a bend over backward and forward too. I do at 6 30. What if I youth in a man to go be a do that? For the mighty dollar. I'm around them on the road. And them also have a, a thing where them can if you stand up on a corner, if two men stand up on a corner attack, or a man and a woman stand up on a corner attack. Them have microphone with zoom in from where you are say. And totally eradicate the sound round you. And just listen to what you are saying. Just like how you have the headphone and then pan play now. Where you not hear not more than what in your ears. Cause it just totally wipe out the sound them round. Well, I see where the man them have microphone. Where what them call it distill. 
the still the sound that is on go you them my ear so you, you talk or something go your girlfriend and all them something and, and <laughs> they might say and they might listen to you and say oh no we don't want that is 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 cheating around we don't want to hear that we want to hear which place them going to bomb up or you think so them catch a whole heap of them people before the thing happen I peep them people here them people in here and when we come here, so, when them come here, so, the man are walking on the road, almost naked. You say, if a black man ever, hey, you say, if a Jamaican ever walk on the road naked, police call him and say, I'm a madman. Why people come here and walk on the road naked? You see them breasts are fling all over the place. Because somebody have had some little things, so, can't feel them breasts look like black people breasts, you know. I like a button. When black people breasts are breasts, you understand? It, it look like chalk light. <laughs> you understand? For them breasts look like Peter Wally. Two Peter Wally are flying together. You know, they can't see the light. When black people are walking with breasts, man, you see breasts. <laughs> you know, breasts. The breasts is best. We are laughing. And them have them walk up and with you. You think you. And that me can't take with them people either, Rasta. You think you, as a black man, or a black woman, can walk through a city <laughs> looking like all them people that walk? Them charge you for um, disorderly conduct. Them charge you for all them things there, you understand? But we tolerate we want the money. We are so far. We are niggas. We want so far. We want the people them need the Yankee dollars to build up politicians and buy them per year and all these things and pay GPS to light with them nag you and all them something there. So we in the cooks of the matter. So we have to speak truth. Don't shut your mouth. Because we never come here with no passport and no visa. So we are maintaining them power structure even more than them. Can you see when you put black people in a situation and a power and them do have the power itself, them is not owner of that power, it comes like them worse than the white people. Them, yeah, because you see when them see the white people, them. It's not the same behavior, them, them behave don't, them don't behave the same way. As when them see you, the black person who look like them. And them now remember say, the whole of we are the same, you know. I just that him have a uniform and him get a training for say, well, right now, I'm maintain certain things what them call law and order. Most of the law and order where them are maintaining you know, is white supremacy to show how supreme white people is over black people and then put black people in other in other situation where them have to maintain that white supremacist mentality so i really have to tell them about all africa them don't want to hear nothing about africa because them say yeah you, that. you don't say about africa you don't say african and kill have african in africa you don't say much disease and that them full of belly with and african people buy into that madness Look on the other day when a whole heap of art, when them don't tell people, well, we are advising you not to go to Africa. Whole heap of artists buy into that. Whole heap of artists buy into it. You know, some of people are killed people. The greatest and the worst atrocities them that has been done on this planet was done by Europeans against 
other people and Europeans against Europeans. The two biggest war in history by any human, human beings was World War I and World War II. It was not black people fighting against Chinese people. It was not black people fighting against white people. It was white people that was killing white people. Millions of white people killing up white people. When you hear about war, like a tribal war in Africa, you hear black people, not white people, you hear black people. Say, why, why the African them just kill off the African them? So why, why Africans can't unite? That is the argument, you know. Why Africans can't unite? Which part of the world you see white people united? They may unite against people, but them a fight against themselves. Look how much millions of people dead in a World War II. Millions, millions of people dead in World War II. And them are black people a fight for them war. Because we still don't have so we don't have no war a fight against somebody. We are drinking rum and coconut water and I think they 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 oh they they like I'm a go and all them thing there. And them just go so boom. Just send in the Royal Air Force for kill out the German them. Boom. Them give a medal and you praise yourself and say, boy, so I fought for England in the Royal Air Force. And you have some old people now who sit down and feel proud, say, them fight for England in the Royal Air Force. You know, see, the people them who them go kill never have nothing to do them not, not do them nothing, you know. One cannot forget the man named Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali go a prisoner already because him say, nah, go kill no Vietnamese because the Vietnamese now, you man the Vietnamese, them now have nothing. And then prefer God prison feet. You see a Muhammad Ali who was the number one boxer in the world one time. Then put him in a prison because him say him not going to kill no Vietnamese because him and them not have nothing. <laughs> but you have black people who proud to go kill half other people for white people. And when you tell them say, but where are that for them say them tell me something. Them black people now kill half black people. Look on in Africa. Look on in Africa. Let me tell you. Disease. The greatest. The, 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 well, not even greatest. The worst human disaster when it come on to disease was in Europe. The worst human disaster when it come on to disease was in Europe because 70 odd percent of the population dead out because of something named the Black Plague. You hear them call it now, the Black Plague. Go back, go, 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 go Google that. we we'll play the tape and I'll tell you how it happened. Google that by your thing about the Black Plague. The Dubonic Plague, them call it. The worst disease. When the, the whole of England nearly wiped out. The whole, of, the whole of Germany, people start to get all so frustrated that they start to kill one another because they say, are the people who are not Christian are cause it and God will punish them. God will punish them feet. That's why they are they hunt down, they are hunt down them fellow human beings who was not Christian and kill them because they say, it's them are cause it because they are worship the devil. That is how far them take it. And we not talk about Africa, no, you know, we are talking about Europeans. A European we are talking about when the plague take the whole of Europe and kill off thousands of people. The war, World War One, World War Two, the only atomic bomb. We are talking about atrocities, you know. Because they always put black people in a certain situation and then black people are internalized and take it for themselves. The only atomic explosion that ever take place on Earth. America dropped that upon the Japanese. No other nation ever dropped an atomic bomb upon any other nation. America dropped that upon the Japanese. That up to today, the effect of that bomb caused a lot of mutation in a Japan that was alien to the Japanese nation. And then we have slavery, shackle slavery. 
Shuttle slavery never exists in Africa. Never exists in Africa. Shuttle slavery. The atrocities that was placed on our ancestors was never known in Africa. And when we talk to your people, say, there's no slave for Africans in Africa to tell you about Lord. We want to ask the African for reparation. Love me and my mother and my father. Make me work with my mother and my father. I talk about what you do to me now. I talk about what my mother and father do to me. I understand that already. And I work out that. So nobody come tell me about, and then now you have black people across the mother and them father. So then my mother and my father not used to beat me too. So when I fight against the man, if him come over my yard, come lick me in my eye. Your mother used to be in your house. And a man come from across the yard and beat you. And you say no. After you start to say, oh, the man come over my yard, you say, then, then your mother no beat you too. So what you complain for? What you complain for? Your mother beat you. So what if me come over your yard, come get a rat in the you complain for? Can me stand up over my yard and see your mother beat you? You don't have no authority to beat me. My mother and my father, my mother and my father, me and my mother and my father will work that out. Me, at this moment, me talk about what you do to me. And what you do to my mother, and what you do to my father, and you be picking them. And that me talk about. So when me say, England, you did the worst thing in our history against a people who you feel say wasn't human beings. And we have sense right now and we know say the time come for reparation for the people them who you enslave. It's a serious thing. This is the cutting edge. The time is 12 o'clock. How did they get us to put a picture or a artwork of a white man on the wall. And when we look on it and close our eye, we think says that white man was saved from oppression. How did they get us to do that? How did they get us to evil? Imagine that there's a little white man sitting up in the sky and wait for some day to come. Where them call judgment day. To take you out of this oppression and out of this disaster and carry you up in the sky and destroy all of the people them on the earth and then bring you back and put you down in a place them called New Jerusalem. How did they get us to think that and believe that? How did they get black people to love oppression? How did they get black people to feel that the only way them going to get out of them oppression is to believe in a white man? Sitting down in the sky. That your great grandmother sit down and a wait for this white man to come save her. And your granny come sit down on the veranda and wait for And your mother also sit down on the veranda and a wait for this white man to come save you. How did they get us to think that? And they hear the black people say, But Jesus not have no color. How the hell Jesus can have no color and Jesus was a real man? According to what I say. Jesus didn't have a geographical location according to them, area where him born. But the person who the people them close them eye and imagine and think about is not a man that come from that part of the world. The man look like him come from California during the 60s and the hippie era. How did they get us to accept this image, this symbol? Of their salvation, of our salvation, as a European, how did they get us to do that? And you have black people. You have, I mean, you expect a man to worship God through his own image, you know. So the white man draw Jesus Christ according to his own image. It's just like oh, you have Buddha. You have Indian Buddha and you have the Chinese looking Buddha. You can't do the difference between the Indian and the Chinese Buddha, you know, simple. One is a big fat one and one is a slim one. The Indian one slim. And my wallet pull the thing on him head. The Chinese one in big and stout and thick. That is the in the Chinese Buddha. So when Guatama Buddha left India in the minds of the people and end up in a China, 
the people them make Buddha in their own image. The people make Buddha in his, their own image. So the Buddha in China, the image of the Buddha in China is not the same image as the Buddha in India. And it's India him come from the original Guatama Buddha, if I pronounce the word right. It's India him come from. Now when white people have praised Jesus, them look on Jesus like how them look. Black people will die for the image that white people worship as for them, Jesus. Black people will die for that same image. And black people believe in them art of art, innocently, ignorantly, blissfully, that this white man who them think pan is that image going to save them, that thinking, that spirit of that white person that going to come out of the sky and save them. How did they get black people who is oppressed more than most people on earth? Years ago, I'm going to Ghana. I'm going to go back to Ghana last week. I'm still to the same thing. You're driving a taxi. I'm on the back of the taxi. It's this white, same Jesus where you see them have all over the world. And when you ask the man, is who that him says him save ya? The image of that man is black people save ya. How did they get black people to identify such a picture? And put it in a them subliminal thinking and thought. And honestly and truly believe it. That if a man like me come round and say them thing there. Nah, go see if you hear a man say, boy, right now you're a wicked, you're a heathen, you're a pagan, you're a antichrist, you're a devil. And him know of art of art, say, when him shut him eye. If they matter about Jesus, no have no color. And all the people say that stupidly. Jesus no have no color, but when him shut him eye and think pan the image of Jesus, it's a white man in my thing pan. You could have, you, 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 you could have conscious little more. For you mention the word Jesus Christ in your head. And shut your eye and think. Is a white man come up in front of you. How did they get black people to think like that? When them not think like that. When the Chinese man think pan Buddha, him not think pan an Indian Buddha. He might think pan a Chinese Buddha. When the Indian I think pan Buddha, I'm not think pan a Chinese Buddha. I might think pan an Indian Buddha. When the Chinese man think pan a Buddha, I'm not think pan an Indian Buddha. I might think pan a Chinese Buddha. The image of Buddha in a film head. Is looking like him. How did they get black people to have a savior that's going to save them? In the image of the man who oppressed them. I don't understand that. I don't understand it. The man who oppressed we for how much years? You have him image in your head as your savior. That's why the you talk like him talk. Do you talk like him talk? And I agree with him. Yeah! Now it's seduced to reduce my knowledge. <laughs> because I will always break down. I am no white god. Don't teach me anything wrong. Who the white god save me from white man oppression? I have no white god. It's just a black messiah. Oh my god, that bless you. Right, stand up and hear black people say we should have give thanks to slavery because if it wasn't slavery we would have still in Africa run up and down naked what a terrible thing oh. out of uh, emancipation park that homosexual statue is a terrible statue imagine you have a statue with a man and a woman stand up naked and all the man can do is stand up and look up at the sky with no erection and that is the image where them have say, African people always run up and down naked. When you go to Africa, when you go to Africa, you can trace the evolution of human beings in them environment. They call it anthropology. Big word. The study of human beings in them environment. The anthropologists will tell you. And you can see it. 
that you have the primitive man and you have the most modern man in Africa. Where in other places you might have one farm or one kind of human being. In Africa, you can't see the evolution. You can't see the mud hut. You can't see the mud hut. You can't see the house. And you can't see the mansion. And when I talk about mansion in relationship to European structure, we are talking about mansion in terms of how oh, African deal mansion. You have man with all their van and clothes, and you have man with what? But you, you want to go to Gambia and Senegal. You want to go to Ghana. Today I tell some youth say, them not see goal yet. Them want to go to Africa to see some chief of gold where them have to have people that walk around with them and hold up them hand. The way the amount of gold they pay them and them can't them can't hang on them man because them hands so heavy that them could all tip over. So them have people who walk with them and call them out a big goal and go around them. That's why they call it the Gold Coast Ghana was the Gold Coast. When you look on the man, them can't take class, the amount of class with them wrap around them. When I talk about naked people now, we are talking about good unwoven cloth. That is woven by hand. The man, they will them put it on and stand up, man. You see, royalty. So when you see white people come to you and show you, say, every time they might draw Africa, there's some naked people around up and down, and we are perpetuate that by putting big statue as a, of a naked man in the park. That's why they give them love around it, so you know. No, if you pass their night, I'm around it, so they give them hang out, you know, because they love the man. Them love where him look, and them love where him now look on the woman. Because I look up in the sky, because I look for wisdom up above. I can't tell the national anthem, grand true wisdom from above. So everybody look at the sky for wisdom. Meanwhile, the woman, you think a woman could have stood up in front of me so naked, and me, they look up in the sky, you mad? And it's a black woman at that, with them chuck fr front light, I mean, like, at steer probably so. <laughs> he has to be a bit of wood, a bit of wood. I mean, seriously, I've been a wood. I've been a wood, I've been a wood, I've been a wood. But can you imagine a woman sitting up in front of you? And the, the artist, is a white woman doing it, you know? <laughs> it's a white woman doing it. It's a white woman put it there. Not put it there, but it's a white woman doing the sculpture. And that is how them look for African. Naked all the while. That's why, that's why the youth, them, when you come, that's how you build the people, you them, know? The man them with the, the thing with in a in a, in a, in a um fern gully. You ever pass when a coast about stop there with some white people? May I tell you, man, them whole arm pan the thing and all that pose. If you ever see them a pose in front of it, man, you, 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 you fright, man. That's why the youth make so much money too. That like you they supposed to make enough money, you know. Because every coast about will stop there with the old man, and the first thing they run to is the big statue of them with the long thing with cock out in front of them. Believe you me. So we, we as African people, when we look on Africa, Africa is a continent, Africa is not a country. And you have different attitudes and behavior in Africa. And when you look on certain parts of Africa, you see the woman them, what them call the virgin woman them, them go without top. Them not have no, them no weird things on the top. Them won't cover right as so in, in front of them. Them, them, them breast out a door. You don't have no rape in them society there. And when they married now, them put on something around them. So you know, see them breast again. When them a young girl, like, 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 Monique, so, them have them breasts out of door. I can't tell you that said. When they married now, you know, see them breasts again. That is culture. That's part of them culture. You know, see, when I see no man, I'm up to do it. Because you have man like Brian where you can't do that. You know, see. But what I say is that, you have different levels and different stages of human being in Africa. You can't find that in a most continent in the earth. So when a man come tell you now, say, why Africa, I mean, Africa people, they're not going to be naked and this and this and that. The man, them now, they no rape. In a them village there. No rape now, go on in a them village there. Because they know the consequence. And the consequence, the consequence are deter them from them thing they too. Because so the system set up over the so. And when you look at certain 
house where the man they build. Look at all the pyramid them. Look at all the places them in a Mali. The Dogan people them where them build. Look at the pyramid them. Nobody can even figure out that that all white people are come and tell you that space people make it. And you have black people who believe that now, you know. You have black people, white people come tell you, say, it's, it's, it's UF, it's, it's people from outer space come build pyramid. And you have black people who find it easier for believe that some space people make the pyramid than for know say a black people make that. And so them have we you know. Anytime they come with something where they can't explain, then put an explanation beside it and then have you start to accept that explanation there. It's like how them have we a thing pan sneak attack to woman. An American apple is a tree in the garden. And donkey attack and all these things. And when you talk to them about Brother Nancy, and you say, you know, say in Africa, the equivalent to the Ark of the Covenant in Ghana is the golden stool. Where the African them say, the golden stool came down out of heaven. This is a stool that make out of pure gold. And them say, come out of heaven. And it is where the chief, the main chief sit down pan now and govern and rule. People they say them things are foolish, this African talk them there. But them believe, say, you have a man named Moses We build a thing named the Ark of the Covenant out of gold or whatever they build it out of. And I walk around with it and tell you, say, that box represents the presence of God on earth. And people believe that. But if you tell them about the golden stool, them now nah believe it because them say, African people say that white people come show you that and you believe it and I'll eat you up and I believe it too click it enjoy major sporting events great tasting barbecue cutting edge Blessed morning, Mr. Hope. Uh, How are you? Mr. Hope, wow. Okay. Yes, no, I found out your last name like about four weeks ago. I read it in the Gleaner. And I thought, what them having in the Gleaner about me? What? what them, what them, what no, them? they were talking about your dub poetry. Okay, and then put Mr. Hope in it. Okay. Yeah, they put the first name. It's Alan, I think. Yeah. But, but Hope, I think, is, is, is a fitting last name. Okay. Because, you know, you're motivating. Yeah. And you're inspiring. That's beautiful. You know, yeah. you make me want to empower my black people, you know. Uh, of course, that is what so, is the power of the world that it's supposed to do. That's why I say speech and yeah. words is not talking, it's not just talking. True. Talking is supposed to go into the consciousness of the people them and motivate them to action. Right. Yes. Definitely. So there were three things that I wanted to just touch on because I was listening to the program and it just, it came out at me, you know. Yeah. And And the first thing, you know, you ask like, what's the problem? Yeah. There are many problems, mm. but I think the first one that, like, I can, you know, identify with is that black people don't read. No. And my first, my first um, instance with that was I was watching a religious hard talk one night, and there was this like, a Chinese man on talking about you're not supposed to eat pork, mm -hmm. and it's in the Bible. Okay. I said, really? I said that must be in Leviticus. So I search out yeah, the whole of Leviticus, Leviticus it there. and. I found it, mm. but it also say you're not supposed to eat um, other things too. Other things too, like right. if you don't have scales yeah. and things, shell and, and, uh, yeah, shell and, and whatever. So yeah. now uh, my grandma used to take me to church, and you know you do the whole thing, confirmation and all that thing. So I said to him, "But I said, but I said, Christians eating pork all the time." Yeah. So I said Roman to him, Catholic especially. So I said to my pastor, um, "Where you get it from that you can eat pork?" And he gave me some scriptures. I wrote them down. I went home, I read what he told me. I said, but this don't have nothing to do with that you can't eat pork. So, oh, I'm sure the New Testament would say, right? No, no, but that's a totally different scenario. That okay. don't have nothing to do, that, that, that has to do with, like, they were talking about going into a place and that if somebody eats something different from you, don't be judgmental about mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. a different thing saying, to, yeah. to saying that you're not supposed to eat something. Mm -hmm. So, from that, I said, I was going to read my Bible. So I read my Bible from start to finish mm. and then you learn that there are books that they took out of the Bible. Yeah, man, a book. Oh, plenty of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, religion, I feel, is just like a, it, the person that said it's the opium of the masses. Mm. is really true because here we are. It's like spiritual warfare. Mm. You know what I mean? And Mind people, control. 
yeah, and, and, and people, people have not read, you know. You, you go to church every, every Sunday, and you have not read your Bible. You can't, how can you then have a tech conversation with somebody mm. about God then, if, yeah. if this is supposed to be the book that they have given us then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how are you then going to have a conversation with me telling me how I should live my life? And you mustn't question it. And I mustn't question it. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I think that is, that is a major problem for us as black people. We don't read. You know what I mean? Um, history books like, you know, Stolen Legacies, mm. you know, so that we can, we can motivate ourselves, feel better about ourselves. Self. Them say if you want to, if you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. Put it book. in a book. And mm. that is, that is definitely true. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, so, so that was the first thing. And then the second thing was when you said sound word is power. You know, <laughs> my mom always said to me, you speak things into being. You know, you have to have that positive vibration, you know. Yes. You ever notice people that are negative, uh, so nothing good ever really follow them. Mm. You know, it, mm. it, it, and even when things aren't going right, you have to, you have to speak it into being. Of you know, course, so at, your, at, at your lowest point, you have to, you have to say, you know, keep positive. It's hard, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but, mm. you know, you have to. Of and, course. And, and, and one of the, one of the things that, that happened to me was, I went into a store and I saw, buy two bottles of, of, of Appleton and you could win a trip to Hedonism mm. and ATI. Mm. I said, you know, I went buy them two bottles and I go and win. Mm. About a week before the drawing, I called down at Appleton to say, have you done, done the drawing yet? Mm. She's like, no, next week. You know, I won next week. I won the prize. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, uh, for me, I bought those two bottles saying that I was going to win. win. And, and, and then it happened. And then, a couple of years later, I read a book called The Secret. Yeah, man. We put the tape up on the radio all the way, man. You know, a powerful book. Powerful, you know what I powerful, mean? Powerful, yeah, man. You really have to, you know, it's a whole way of life. It's like, it's like what early Rasta was saying, you know, about yeah. liberty. Yeah. You know what I mean? How you people yeah. how people may do you something but you know not that you turn the other cheeks to make them do the same thing no, again yeah, but, but yeah. it's that if you see them in in trouble and you yeah. can give Help. some assistance mm. you, you you give some assistance you know what i mean yeah man give thanks man give thanks. and then the last thing that i wanted to touch on which is why i really uh touch a situation here in jamaica is the hair issue mm. and i had a situation just today my grandmother's niece is babysitting her nephew's child and i said wow she she um she don't you know babies at this age don't usually have more hair but i didn't touch her hair or anything and she said no man it, it shrunk you know um because you know our hair tends to shrink when you yeah, comb yeah, it out yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it shrink it mm. don't stay mm. long like our caucasian people yeah, kinky, so, kinky. It, yeah so you know i said oh okay cool and uh, so I left it at that. And then later in the day, I was leaving. And she goes to the baby, yeah, man, and, and we should just relax it early <laughs> for you. <laughs> train it, said, train it here. And I said to her, I said to her, are you mad? Mm. Why are you going to do that? Yeah, you, you, it's just a, to me, it's just a slap in God's face that you'd really didn't yeah, like what I gave you anyway. Yeah. You know, but I think, I think as, as black people, we need to love what we have of and course. not try to, I want to have what other people have. That's how I see it. And people say, "Boy, you're, it's because you have good hair. <laughs> you, you can, you can." <laughs> say what I <laughs> you know what I mean? But I get, I get, I get um flack from my family. Car. My grandmother at eighty eight is still pressing on color in her hair. And I, mm. when I went natural and had it out in an afro, she said, "You can't do something with your hair. You just have it out yeah, like that." You know, you you know what I mean? Loose, like you look I, like a loose yeah, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Until now, you know, after years of having it like this, mm. she just don't want to say anything yes, anymore. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? But to me, this is a, a expression for me. Of this course. is who I am. Who I am. Yeah. And I love myself. And yeah. I think as black people, we need to, you know, yeah, love yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Love what you have, you know. Your features. This is how you are. But you see, we don't have, we don't have any images of, 
of Me, of black course. people yes, yes, of course, being, yes. you know, say, successful or, yeah, yeah. or that be, this person they, they, they is history so confusing our thinking that we feel that slavery is our history. Right. Yes, right. You know? So anytime you know? we think about blackness, we think about slavery. You know, and, and and it's more than that. Like Africa is definitely on my list of thing of places to go. Yes. You know, yeah. um, it's just really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just haven't been Africa afforded that continent. opportunity. But you, you see, the thing with that, the, the best person is the person who never go Africa and knows them is African. Well, yes. 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 I, I mean, I can't be anything other than yes. that. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, you, you and and I suppose you know, Marcus Garvey said, you know. You have to know your roots. You have mm. to know where yeah. you're coming from. And so, of course, I cannot deny yes. the other ancestors that I have. Yes. But African is the major thing, and it is what I ad I identify with. You know, mm. the Indians don't see me as Indian, mm. and the Caucasians certainly don't see me as Caucasian. Mm. So I must I then identify myself as yeah. African. And even though you're going to have some of them blood in here, them still not see as them. R well... Yeah, but, but that's their problem. Mm, that's course. not my problem. No, definitely you, not. You, you know what I mean? Mm. We, we can't really take on... And, and I used to have that, that mentality too, that, you know, well, Africa is for Africans, mm. you know, and I wasn't born there, so I am not that, but <laughs> you, have to, you have to move past that. Yeah, you're not an yeah. African because you're born in Africa. You have right. African because Africa born in you. Right. Yes. You know, so... <laughs> But it's, 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 it's growth, you know what yeah, I mean? Of course, of course. And, and, and you have to read, read and you have to yeah, speak to people and, 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 and listen to people and, yeah. and, and, and grow and know where you want to, yeah. where you want to go. That's why I love listening. I listen to your program every Thursday because I tutor yes. and I'm away to but the different... But Wednesday, why are you listening? <laughs> no, because I like, I like the evening program, but usually I'm in my bed sleeping. Okay. But I say, you know... I'm going to listen. Tune in tonight. I'm going to tune in tonight. Oh, okay, let's try it. That is good. That you is know, good. Yeah. so just keep doing what you Yeah, man, doing. give thanks, Mota. sister. Give thanks. And, you know, bless up. All right, give thanks, yeah? All right, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, bless him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Mota. Yeah, man, bless him. Yeah, man. Come in like a repossessed took my locks. Me repossessed. <laughs> hey, boss. Be not like a kind of program. <laughs> hey, <no. laughs> Brethren. Hey, now brother, you're not easy, you know. I even make me laugh for one while than that night, you know. Every time this man can't talk, I make me laugh, you know, right, sir. Me oh, repossess Tukuma laps. Tukuma say, me a go and like say, me wa put on, what do you say? What do you say, me wa? Like, like you are repossessing lap, like you get the uh, yeah, like higher purchase. Yeah, like you want, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what, though? <laughs> Tukuma, Tukuma, there's nobody in life. Would that it believe, say? He would have lose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like a type of word. Yes. Hello? Yeah, yeah, man, may I hear you, like man? Like a type of the word, you see? And that with him, and the word kill him now. But then say, cock mouth, kill cock. Cock mouth, kill cock, man. That is what yeah. happened. Cock mouth, kill cock. Uh, and the word. Yes. Yeah, and, him know, call me say, you know. and him call me name in the article. That is part of it, too. Because I don't tell you, oh. you shouldn't call me name in the article. <laughs> You should have never called me in the article. Word. Anyway. You see, and, and you know, I talk about Bible to and Bible remind me of person and, and, and the word business and the cock mouth kill cock. Me that you bow and pass away. You may have a rooster there and one rooster there when you decide to say I'm going to eat things on the dinner, you know. And mm. suck the <laughs> rooster turn up missing. Mm. I smell the teeth with so the next day, he decided so when he got to church, he might go preach in Gandhi's and I ask if nobody have any roots, you know, or whatever. Mm. So the man, he got to church. So he asked himself, well, I never asked no question, and whoever, I can't answer the yes to it. Yeah. Just get up and stand up, let me see you. Yeah. So he said, yeah, the question is this. Anybody here have a cock? The man, them stand up. So he said, no, 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 misunderstand. The can the question. You know, anybody in here get a cock this morning where I know for them. About half of the woman in my congregation stand up. He said, no, 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 misunderstand, man. What I mean to say, has anybody here seen my cock? 
all of the little boy them like quiet get up and tell them. So you have to know how you use the word. Hello? No, go lock down. No! No, Rasta. No, I word powerful, man. But where you come from, Richard? No, where you come from? Oh, well, wait a second. The party said, no, we say everybody see my cock. And yeah. all of the youth, them. Stand up. For the choir, stand up. All of the other words, them stand up. Yes. Mm-mm. Yeah, that, that's yeah. funny. That's for yeah, everything. Yeah, I know with the word. Yeah, the word, the word so power. powerful. Mm, yeah, man, I agree with you. No, that's funny. Uh, you know, I said to before, I forget. You know, I play a song the other day. Mm. The prison sang them. Which prison sang them? I mean, it, no, he had a place on song about two, three weeks ago. Mm. He had a place on a song with you with prison. I guess I went to talk about the same you to your interview and thing. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, 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 the brethren, yeah. I'm a matter of fact, I wonder why. I'm not sure I keep my job. But look how much, look how much policeman warm. See an eye job and, and then we pick over for a year and then spend 10 years. Yeah, and, and the brethren, same capture criminal upon the road, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And carry them. Like he uh, was responsible for the Grand Spend Police Station, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was superintendent of Grand Spend Police Station. Mm -hmm. Sign out for all the M16, them when they go up on the road and all of you there. Well, man, a senior, senior investigating after that life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you, man, him rough, man. I don't mm. want him for the program, trust me. Yeah, I don't want him for the time I call him for me, um, me don't uh, suggest you, sir. I'm going to link on Crazy Johnson music, eh? No, no, no worry, sir. Oh, you know, sir, I'm going to play it tomorrow. Oh, uh, what? Well. Uh, hey. You talk about what? England? Yeah, man. England is a bitch. I'm going to tell you what they do to Jim. No, no, I think England is a... Kick him and kick him and them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son is later, it's name. Son is later. Don't like so. But you have the next one, I'm going to play it tomorrow, too. Well, England is a bitch. Uh, There's no escape in it. You don't know that one there? not sure if Yeah, man, I have one name. England is a bitch, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember, but I will try this now. I hear it. I will depend on the road, but I will try this. All right, so I give thanks. Uh, yeah. Well, I love your story, them all the way. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I will go and go tell all my wife, them two, you know. Believe well, me. Well, I know, not, hey, one more good thing. Mm. You see? Mm. With, 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 with. We are dealing with like few, few uh, people that were supposed to run the government, you see? Mm. And we are supposed to be slavery and thing and thing. Me had a read one good thing one time where a man, I mean, him again, Russell was like so. Russell? He's right. Yeah, he's right on some of them. For him, ah, man, I'm going to do it. I'm going to write this out while I'm going to do it. Uh, you have to call back and tell the body. You have to call back and tell the body. The advertisement never come up. Imagine no, no, no. the funny in a Rasta. Believe you me. That's for the bridge. Right? When you know, I tell the bridge and say, I'm going to play England is a bitch tomorrow. But they trick me and trick him, you know. And put them, I'm going to play it. <laughs> you call this dub poetry. Linton Quasi Johnson. After we done build your penitentiary and build your school, brainwash education, you give you and turn you in a fool, but what? Uh, we're going to chase them out of town. Yes, cutting Ble edge. Blessed love. Bless Blessed man. Yeah, man. Yeah, my call tonight, you know, because ah. of this camera and visit. Yeah. Now, the uproar, when we look at it, it is most of the people agreeing that this man insult the Jamaican people. But when we want to look now at the legal part of this thing now, you know, you see European people make us some laws, you know, and they try to look like these laws are only for white people alone. In 1907, they had a convention in the Hague, known as the Hague Convention which came about to define crimes against humanity. This was in 1907. At the Treaty of Versailles in France, they used it against the Germans and the Turkish people, you know, having them committed for crimes against humanity. 
Now, when we come further to the Nuremberg Tribunal after World War II, 1946, up to 1950, they met for four years. And they established now, they put a definition, you know, to crimes against humanity. And the crimes against humanity was established and worded. Now, I'm going to just read four lines of what crimes against humanity entail. Because these are the things that they use now, you know, to judge them one another as, as European. Now, principle six, subsection C, entitled crimes against humanity. One, murder. Two, extermination. Three, enslavement. Four, deportation and other inhumane acts done against any civilian population. And it go further and say, our persecutions and political, racial, or religious grounds. Now, all of these is applicable to the African people. Now, in law, the international law that was established now out of the Nuremberg Tribunal, it stated... There shall be no statute of limitation to hinder us from carrying out whatever we have to do to apprehend these people. So even if them catch the man or them not catch the man who perpetrate the crime, one of the German was tried in absentia, meaning that he never even did it and couldn't even find him. But them still try him and found him guilty for crimes against humanity. Now these are the things that we are saying. David Cameron knew these things. Know these things as a member of the British Parliament, as a man who is in a family that benefited from slavery. Because he is in the lineage of the people and we start Barclays Bank. Out of the 21 million pounds that was given to these people, the slave owners. So when him come now to Jamaica to say, let us get past slavery get and forget it. it. Yeah, get over it. Get move over on, it. Move on. It is such an insult to our people. Of course. And when you look at the 63 parliamentarians that is on the one vice here calling out Brother Henry, Mike Henry, is the only man who is carrying a stand. Mm. And all the rest of them is silent, like them not do, do history. Me know enough of them go you we and they do history. Of course, you understand. And, and they know that, these when things. They, when them used to go you with them was very radical against certain things. Of course, no, they are very very passive and sell out the people them. That is the word. Them yeah. sell out the people because them know in a little comfort zone. Yeah. Where them now have to rock the boat again. Them I eat as much as them want and mm. them have them big car. The other day when we done a parliament a, 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 um, protest, you know. Up your big Benz and BMW and the, the, the big van, them thing where, where them are driving. No, all of them comfortable. Mm. Till when me look one, upon one of them who was a radical, as you say, you know. And I said, Bridget, you see how you get big and fat and, and, and you really forget the struggle. He must say, no, we forget past that and we forget grow up. And I say, look at that. <laughs> look at that. If we forget grow, grow up, you know, like me shouldn't have my placard and have, and have yeah, protest. Yeah, 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 you forget grow up. <laughs> we forget grow up. Because him grow up now and now ah, independent side. Him in him comfort zone. Yeah, who the people them who used to fight against now become him friend. Aye, yeah, yeah. aye. So him is now, as what them doing in South Africa, him become an honorary white. Yeah, yeah, the same system, you know, all of them now become honorary white mm -hmm. that them in our comfort zone where not now nah, trouble them and them have a little wealth with stash where oh, yeah, so them know for them, them to send them. All of them, all of them, Regin, all of them. Yes, me now nah sing out none of them. them come in a politics with nothing and go out back with more things than what them did want. Well, this is the thing that has yeah. been taking place now. 
Because you see the system that we create now, the private sector is the man that will fund the political party. And the political party protect the interests of the private sector. That's, that's the IMF. That is what the IMF are doing, are protect the private interests. Of course. Yes. So it is that system now that we have to overthrow. So in this year, 1865, which is 150 years since Paul Bogle chop off some man's head for gain some civil liberties, and we want the people to remember this now, you know, and the time come for rise up. Because when a, when a Baptist minister who normally preach for love and forgive and all them things there, in 1865, when him decides to well, have to take up my sword, you know, you know. Mm. And I forgot to chop off some man's head so that justice can be done. So we come full circle now that this year now is the 158th year. Mm. If you read that thing with Dan Robert, I'm right, you know, when he made a doing thesis at university about the notorious Moran Bay Rebellion. When you look at the conditions in Jamaica today and what the man are talking about, where they're happening in 1865, it's the same, same thing. thing. Same thing, of course, it's the same thing. The exact same thing is happening. So the ayah go down, the ayah go down, uh, St. Thomas, eh? Yeah, the man are for the, right now, I apply it to the police, them, so I can walk with a last, you know, because I want to have a last in my hand that day, there. Yeah. Just as how Paul Bogle did walk with him last and go in at the courthouse, there, you know. Because we have to walk in the footsteps of them elderly that had set the groundwork for certain freedom and civil liberties that we enjoy today. I don't know if I you, me should have asked this, but Saturday night, they have anything long there Saturday night? Yeah, man, because Saturday me night. Have, they have any table business that go on long there because I want to go down, if, if, if they don't have some table thing long there, I go down there Saturday, you know. Saturday. Yeah. You don't know what we are going on Saturday. Yeah, man, we are going to have the coming up band them come in no, and we are going to have the candle vigil lighting up the thousand candle. We are going to have the tea. Artists are going to be there, man. We are going to bring in some artists, see meds. Whoa, yo, you know. The youth that were singing Bloody War were coming from Canada. Bridget, you know, listen to what I ask, you know. You know, listen to what I ask. Where you say? You're talking about artists, I'm going to ask about artists. I'm going to have the table down there. Yeah, yeah, man, then you come in a table now, go set, man. No, no, that may ask him, man, if you have any table, look, I can't come in and have a table, you know. It, the table I go set, man, yeah, the no, breaking of bread, yeah, man, and the anointing of oil, and so the cleansing with fire. Saturday, that'll go, uh, that'll go happen Saturday. Saturday, yes, now, I. Which part, which part up the Saturday night, they're going to have that? Right in a stony god. Right in a stony god. Right uh, in a stony god. Where, where, where Paul Boga Church used to be. Artists, artists, artists. I'm just wondering if that's going to go on. Yeah, man. That's going to go on, uh, man. That, that means interesting. And we have a spiritual leader, King David. We have the coming of youth. They are coming strong. Mm, all right. Yeah, man. All right. Blessed man. Give thanks. Yeah. Go and love, my brother. Yes. Yes. Cutting edge. We're there with you. Continue that tune. We're not taking no bribe. We refuse to take any bribe. We not nah, gonna make them give you no bribe at all. No five thousand dollar, no Kentucky fried chicken, no ox steel. We don't have that. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Marcus Garvey, first wife, Amy GX Ashwood. This is a souvenir recording. In memory of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the Jamaican hero who pointed the way to African independence in his clarion call for a new day and a new and greater destiny for his people. Yeah, the singer is called Telma Massey. The singer is Telma Massey. The narration is Amy GX Ashwood, Marcus Garvey's first wife.
the body of Marcus Garvey slumbers, but his immortal spirit, like a mighty dynamo, vital, alive, ennobling, still inspires his people along the path to human dignity, racial pride, and national sovereignty. The ideals for which he fought lived and died Asunder the filial bond that links the human heart. Life's drama folds and refolds, and the melody of the immortal greats and their accomplishments linger on. Listen to the spiritual self of the immortal Marcus Garvey in poetry, in song, and in music. The memory of a people is best portrayed. prophet of the age. Who was this man of whom the erudite James Weldon Johnson once said, he had the daring and energy of the Napoleonic personality that draws masses of followers. He stirred the imagination of the masses as no other leader ever had. In the course of time, this man, Garvey, brushed aside the Goliaths of the first independent nation in the Caribbean and he became Jamaica's first national hero. Who was Marcus Garvey? Marcus Messiah Garvey was a man earthbent for the eternal search of oneness with the universe. He was born at sunrise in the beautiful garden parish of St. Anne, Jamaica, West Indies on the 17th day of August, 1887, near the falls of the Roaring River, where he grew with nature and drank much of her inspiration. He was of humble birth and was the eighth child of Sarah and Marcus Messiah Garvey Sr. 
Garvey was born in an atmosphere of prophecy. When his father first saw him, so close a resemblance did he bear him. He was overcome with joy, and he lifted him up in his arms and cried out, Your name shall be Messiah, and you shall someday be a Moses. There was nothing in the drab lamplit setting in which Garvey stood to speak in his native St. John that night in October 1914, which gave the slightest flicker of the shape of things to come. No one present, not even Garvey himself, believed that the stern-faced man standing so nervously before him in Jamaica would someday hold a star aloft and urge millions to gaze on it and follow him. Marcus Garvey set out on the lonely trail of smashing many of the preconceived ideas which made the black man inferior in his thinking, such as to believe that he was belonging to a vicious and predestined evil race, that God and the angels were white, that he, the black man, personified the devil, who was reputedly black, that he was the likeness of black magic and misfortune, the son of Ham, a hewer of wood and drawer of water, and that all the creation of the dominant white civilization calculated to foster the concept of white supremacy was ordained by God. Garvey was an angry man. He smote his chest and demanded to know the author of the scurrilous wicked forgery, 4,000 years after Noah had gone to his grave in peace. When he spoke in Madison Square Garden, he served notice on all the nations squatting in Africa to get out before the wrath of 400 million black men, women and children hurled them into the sea. Arising from obscurity, Garvey's never-to-be-forgotten oratory took him to the very apex of fame. Millions unquestionably followed him. Such were the conditions of his people bowed down with inferiority complex for hundreds of years that Garvey visibly touched to tears and compassion in the deliverance of his message emphatically thundered. Up, ye mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. The black man of yesterday has disappeared from the stage of human activities forever. And in his place stands a new man, erect, conscious of his manhood and rights, and fully determined to preserve himself at all costs. Marcus Garvey, in his finest hour in Liberty Hall, New York, in the 1920s addressing the Universal Negro Improvement Association, and African Communities League said so many things applicable to the conditions of today. To read the world's history of races written by some writers gives the impression that the black man amounted to nothing in the creation. We are satisfied, however, to know that our race gave the first great civilization to the world. For centuries our ancestral home was the seat of learning and here black men who were fit for the gods were philosophers, scientists, artists, and men of vision and leadership. On the other hand, our traducers were groping in darkness and continental barbarism. Black men, you were once great, and you will be great again. Great men have come out of Egypt, out of Ethiopia, out of Africa, Sahara. Great men will come out of America, the West Indies and the islands of the seas. Our history is as great as that of any race or people. And nothing on this side of heaven or hell will make us deny it, notwithstanding the false treaties, essays, speculation and philosophies. Their arrogance is but skin deep, and an assumption that has no foundation in morals nor law. When we were embracing the sciences on the banks of the Nile, when our civilization had reached the noonday of progress, their ancestors were still running naked and sleeping in holes with bats, rats, and other animals. Garvey's messianic message to the groping millions of his race would surely bring him to Golgotha. His leadership would emancipate millions 
from the shackles of mental and moral servitude. It was the great gulf, it was the violent contrast between the upper and middle classes and the people of his race which made the first telling impact on the mind of the youthful Garvey. Illiteracy and grinding poverty were the two decisive factors which contributed to his impact. Like Socrates, Garvey geared himself for his cup of hemlock, like a Christ on his way to a blood-stained cross. Before his death, however, in 1940, he would have the satisfaction of knowing that a squalid century after the emancipation of 1838, the men and systems against whom he fought such a good fight had lost forever their footing on the ladder of imperial and economic power. Marcus Garvey left you a special message, my children. Let no voice but your own speak to you from the depths. Let no voice but your own rouse you in time of peace or war. Hear all, but attend only to that which concerns you. Your allegiance shall be to your God, then to your family, race and country. Remember always that the Jew, in his political and economic urge, is always first a Jew. The Caucasian is first a Caucasian under all circumstances, and you can do no better than to be first and always a black man. Be sure to teach your children science and religion, for it lies as our only hope to withstand the evil designs of modern materialism. Lift up your hearts and repeat to yourselves the words of the African poet Terence. I am a man, and I think that nothing that is common to humanity is foreign to me. Garvey endeared himself to his thousands of listeners when he dramatized and immortalized the heroes and heroines of Afro-American history. Through the power of his oratory, Garvey showed them that Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman were equally deserving of a niche in the Hall of Fame as Martha Washington and Betsy Ross. They were made to feel that the muse which inspired Phyllis Wheatley was no less fine than that of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. The black poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar was made to take his place with the great poets of the world. It was seen that the African General Hannibal surpassed Napoleon in military genius and Toussaint Louverture and Antonio Maceo were worthy of comparison with George Washington and Lord Kitchener. Marcus Garvey's spellbound audiences heard that Crispus Athos was as great as Patrick Henry and that the Ethiopian Queen of Sheba outshone Britain's Queen Victoria in the splendor of her court. Solomon, in his wisdom, towered above Gladstone. King Menelik was more than Abe Lincoln. Never before had the descendants of the slaves been so uplifted. Marcus Garvey delivered that message, and all the world wondered. Africa for the Africans, those at home and those abroad. It was the same message delivered 4,000 years before by the Jewish patriot. Let my people go. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of his journey, we pause to assess his work and worth. We find that Marcus Garvey has left his people in America at the crossroads of history and destiny. The now 38 independent states in Africa are the first of the fruits of them that slept in the chronology of his prophecy. To quote his own words, Hail, United States of Africa, hail. Also Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Guyana, and his own homeland, Jamaica, still on the wave of freedom. The associated states within the British Commonwealth of Nations, Grenada, Antigua, and Barbuda, Montserrat, St. Kitts, and Nevis, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica and Guilla and the British Virgin Islands flying the flag of freedom and independence and echoing the voice of Marcus Garvey. Whatever his failings, Marcus Garvey brought fresh hope and courage to his people. Mankind has benefited because Marcus Garvey passed here. 
And who knows? But someday posterity will confirm him in the title of the Black Moses. Then millions of black men, women, and children will make the pilgrimage to his shrine in Jamaica. For they will have come to pray and kneel at the tomb of the father of African independence. Oh, he vowed to win his race its destiny, to lift them up from ignorance and hell. With deathless courage, fashioned victory, fighting unequal fairs, what if he fell? He's gone, tis true, but history yet will tell that Marcus Messiah Garvey did his work, and he did it well. Amy GX Atwood, Marcus Garvey's first wife, because you know the next wife in name, Amy GX Garvey. Well, that was Amy GX Atwood. A lot of people have never heard her say anything, but as you can hear, is a very powerful woman, exalting the name of her husband, Marcus Garvey. Powerful woman. Standing with her husband and saying, look here, this man here, this man here, is the man. So, Amy GX Ashwood, Marcus Garvey, pick it. GX uh, Garvey, Ashwood Garvey, the whole time. <laughs> why are we are telling you, why are we are telling you. I, you know, say, me go to my bed, I, rem I realize, me, me, I'm sick, I never correct it, you know. Me don't know, me don't have nightmare for the north till next year, you know. The lady name is Amy Ashwood Garvey. The other wife named Amy GX Garvey. How could I say such a thing? So I want to tell the people them that the voice that you heard was Marcus Garvey's first wife, Amy Ashwood Garvey. His second wife was named Amy GX Garvey. So that is the correction of who I make. Amy Ashwood is the voice you heard. She Hardly anyone has ever heard her talking, and that was a very powerful talk about her wife. Yeah, man. About her husband here again. I went back, wait. At the time I go to my bed, you know, <laughs> believe you be. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was a very powerful talk about her husband. Yeah, man. Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Yes. Serious thing. Eh. Uh, when you do them things, yeah, you know, you have to know, say, a whole heap of ones out there, whole heap of ones out there, listen to it, too, you know, and a, and a vex, and a puff up, because them ear, you have ram and a preach and a put in all the arguments that we talk about since the, the program start. And then we start out with Peter Touch, you know. To really make you know where we are dealing with. But, what if I want out there? Even those people who are say, Marcus Garvey is our first national hero. Them don't like what Marcus Garvey has said. Them don't like what Marcus Garvey has said, you know. Because you have someone who has what Marcus Garvey feel. I am a living testimony that Marcus Garvey did not feel. How you were to sit down here, so it's a living testimony about the not failure of Marcus Garvey. So, we are continue this journey because the journey is long and we have stamina. We are going to give up. We are not going to give up. And we are asked those who have the same authority that we have. We have authority right here so now. Who have microphone in front of them. If you use the microphone wisely because you will be judged accordingly. Eventually you will be judged accordingly. 
if what you put over the airway because it sound don't stop trouble. Why you know that? What you say ear so? And it resonates through the microphone, through the airwaves, through the neutrons and the electrons and whatsoever it got through. It gone thousands and billions of miles beyond the cosmos. As a matter of fact, the way it gone far, it could have end up back right which part it there, so now. The first person who make that sound could have end up and make the sound again because it got so far in the outer space that it come forward 360 degrees, come connect again. And we are very aware of that. That sound will stop trouble. What was said thousands of years ago is still traveling. Travel and travel till it connect. Till it connect. And we are very conscious of connections. So we don't just talk frivolously about issues that confront us as a people, as African people. When we talk about puppet niggas and negroes in suits and them phallic symbol choking them neck. Yes? The necktie is a phallic symbol. For those of you who don't know what phallic is, go and look on your computer. Both the slave them. I walk around the place. I help the slave master to oppress them black brothers and sisters. Yes, that's what the slave master do. The slave master use the same slave to oppress the same slave. Sometimes few of those slaves escape and go join up with the, 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 the field slave. But a lot of the time, them stay because them could have get the crops from the slave master table. When the slave master eat and the bone left, him drop it upon the ground. And the old slave clearing up the house, pick it up, carry it, go back to the kitchen and look to see if slave master left any piece of meat upon the bone that in can Hook it off, and if none of the day, him chew the bone till he had the miggle soft, and then so you start to eat now, you know. Cause me used to love that when me I eat, when me used to have meat, you know. When when the, when the long bone left, you know, you just go so bam, and chew that till you get the miggle light, like, the miggle of the bone. The meal of the bone now come like his flesh a crater and I eat it, so you know. And at that, a whole heap of this bossy slave love. The bone. And then the more come give me the bone too. Well, me and no slave. I mean, now nah, I eat when the slave master left. Me prepare my own meal and my own food. Me prepare my own meal and my own food. And me are scared too. If you go buy for them food sometime. So sometimes I just make sure I have my little pop chow and my little lettuce in my little garden that I can maintain myself sometime and at times that I don't keep relying upon them for prize me. I better me pies myself than make somebody come pies me. We must be able to make mistakes of our own and correct them for ourselves. We don't need some people to come correct we when them is when them need to be corrected. Them no have no authority to come correct we. So when we talk about reparation, when we talk about repatriation, when we talk about Haile Selassie the first, when we talk about Haital food, when we talk about ganja, when we talk about locks, when we talk about Africa, 
We don't want no bossy slave come correct way. And no illiterate slave. That's what the daughter say. Black people don't want to read. We don't want no black people who don't want to read about them own history and own culture and own understanding of life. Come tell we say where we are say foolishness. Because we are fight for the liberation of all black people. And for a larger extent, all humanity. But we can't touch upon humanity yet because until the philosophy that all one race superior and the other inferior, until the color of a man's skin is of no significance than the color of his eyes, I listen to that and say, we Africans will fight if it is necessary. Because we are confident in the victory of good over evil. So until we dismantle white supremacy and racism, which is that I talk about, the philosophy, the philosophy of racism, the philosophy of white supremacy, that all one race superior and the other inferior. I say we will fight if it is necessary. Because we are confident in the victory of good over evil. So no matter how long it tell, take. And we even might forgive. But we will never forget. We even might forgive. But we will never forget. So, we are talking about this mantle of white supremacy, this mantle of racism. We are talking about the complexity. That it all for us as African people who choose to take the side of the slave master and maintain white supremacy in them black self and fight against the, the revolutionaries who stand up for them to free them. Those slaves that sit around the dining table of the slave master and not eating any food. But because them sleep round the table, them things that them is diners. Malcolm X, so you have to be eating around the table. You can't just sit around the table and feel that you're a diner. You have to be eating around the table. And most of us sit around the table. And we can't eat. We can't eat. We cannot eat anything because we have to wait till the slave master finish eat. And then we take up the plate and carry go to the kitchen and sieve out. We never want to get the dog. We never want to get the dog and the food because by the time we don't eat the food, not even the bone the dog get. Not even the bone the dog get. And that we see a go on now. Especially amongst the politicians them. Them carry the food go to the kitchen and I sieve out, sieve out. And the dog there, they go boom, 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 boom. And the child get a bone. And when the dog do get a bone, not even the juice in the middle of the bone, they there. Because by the time the slave master up at top, who put him, 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 him slave for, for rule the slave master, by the time him done suck, by the time him done suck the bone, suck the bone, suck the bone, it is the bone white. And the dog no want that again. The dog say, no, 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 bone no white, you know. Bone supposed to have a meat pan it. Terrible thing. Terrible, terrible thing. Them have we now. And then black people fall for that. That they make a little white guy come here. Who in great grandparents. Earn. And get rich. After the backbone of our people and then we confront him with him and tell him they must move on when we confront Queen Elizabeth with this she said in those days it was legal this is what Queen Elizabeth said when confronted with the reparation she said it was not she don't have nothing to do with it and by the way in those days it was legal It was legal to have human beings 
on wooden ships packed like sardine in the belly of the ship. Meanwhile, dear ancestors, had church service on deck. Church service. Because if you go to one of the biggest slave dungeons right now on the west coast of Africa, which was not dear for Africans, but was dear for wine and all these things, and them turned into a olden area for African people to move to a place in the door, the door of no return. If you go there and entering and exiting, there's two church in front of the big gate. What me say? What did I say? I said if you go to Cape Coast Dungeon and on entering this place, this horrific place that held our ancestors for transport to this part of the world where our ancestors sit packed like sardine in those dungeons when you look on the ground in the dungeon them if you want to believe it i don't believe it but me where you sit on your talk to you experience that with my barefoot a walk pan filth peace blood it kick up on the ground. It become the earth. The concrete where the dead they move because those years of filth and sweat and blood and tears come up on the ground after ancestors and human beings pass through. And it not clean out like how it should have clean out. So it become part of the earth itself. That is where you walk upon in the dungeon. In a cape course. And when you walk out there's two church right in front of that dungeon where the slave owner, after getting a good amount of slaves, him called them, him went to church to thank God for the bountiful harvest of human cargo. And when him could, when him never want to leave the the, the, the the dungeon, the castle, they would have it on top of the dungeons. Unbelievable, unbelievable. That underneath it, you have human beings bawling out, crying out, and pan top you have praise Jesus Christ. And then you want me now to come here so now. To close my eye and think on Jesus Christ. When you use Jesus Christ to enslave me and my ancestors, no way, no way, no way. Because Jesus Christ you call upon. And when you have more than where you are, you, you ask for, you thank God, you thank Jesus for that. And when you reach the middle of the ocean, when you reach the middle of the ocean, and certain storm take the water, and your boat a rock either and dither, and you feel that your boat a turn over because it have on too much weight. Instead of you throw over the back of the, the barrel, them have rum. Instead of you throw over the barrel, them have wine. You throw over my mother and my father over the board. I tell you, we will forgive, but never forget. Because we is like that. Even though we go through all of that, we still maintain our humanity. But no guy, these guys who run the country, should I tell the guy, say, look ya, after all of that, you can't come tell me, they must move on. Because you, you not apologize for nothing where your first riches them come off of. You not apologize for that. So you can't come tell me nothing but move on. And we must know if we must move on or not. Because the thing no resolve yet. It no resolve. Because if it resolve, I wouldn't depend on the radio talk like this. 
I would not talk if it is resolve. It never resolve. So we are saying, and the people them have my mindset. We have a legitimate cause. And we must not relent. We must not relent. Because the same time the Prime Minister of England there, Princess Anne there. Oh, nobody knows that was a Princess Anne. Where Princess Anne come Jamaica for though? Where Princess Anne come Jamaica for though? What did she do when she come here? What kind of meeting and this and that did take place with Princess Anne? Oh, come on, you know, nobody had talked about the meetings them which talk with Princess Anne and what Princess Anne do and what. Princess Anne never said nothing. She just shut her eye and open her eye and not say nothing. She said, all the dreadlocks are part. She said, wow, I thought it would be nice if I could see that dread in Buckingham Palace. You remember them find the man from Queen Elizabeth bed, sit down in a Queen Elizabeth Buckingham Palace. You don't remember that? As Sparrow sing tune about it, you know, how the hell the man get in at the Queen Elizabeth bed? You ever see Buckingham Palace said, Queen Elizabeth have a man in her bedroom. That's another no lie. That's another no little gossip. That did happen. Oh, nobody not talk about Princess Anne's visit. She was here to gossip. That did happen. Oh, nobody not talk about Princess Anne's visit. She was here too. Yes, she was here too. What did she discuss with the people them who she met? I don't hear much of it. Maybe I'm not listening. Maybe I, I wasn't here really. I wasn't here, but I never seen a big headline. Princess Anne said, or Princess Anne went. I don't know. Somebody can call and tell me, maybe tomorrow and tell me. What happened when Princess Anne came here? Because all eyes is on the Prime Minister. Maybe not the Prime Minister, we should have let her watch. It's Princess Anne. Mosquitoes will breed in containers that hold water. Me free. Well, as I give thanks, say, eh, me hungry. Over there in the marketplace, Reddings Road side, Kansas Spring Road said we give thanks for providing us with those food to keep we steady <laughs> where we dug us so, You understand? Give thanks to eh, O'Brien who's still there with we now nah sleep. Give thanks to Monique who left we from 12 o'clock. You know, say so we are come forward, there are little more families from 2 to 5, 4 to 5 with the stepping razor. The art of war. Here we go. They say, if you have no confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. <laughs> 